My friends, we are blighted by savage deception from those we once thought of as brothers. They have stolen the artifacts from beneath us, and now they mock our righteous fury. We will not yield to this curse, no! We will plunge our blades into their ignoble hearts and reclaim our birthright. Much like the sea crashing against the shore, we will crush these traitors! Now, with me, companions! For Bogolo! Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back to another video. So, back in February, we saw the release of the Old World Edition for Total War Warhammer and with that came the revamp of the Bretonian Army roster and their addition as a playable faction to the campaign itself. Well, at the time, there was a bit of an outcry that Albrecht of Budolo didn't wield the trident of Manan even though he had a quest chain for it in his campaign. He didn't actually possess it in battle as a weapon. However, this little mod I've got for you today now makes that a possibility. You can see here the great man himself has now got his trident. So I thought I'd make a little video on it and we'll actually play out his quest battle today. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's say only a little mod, but it you know, adds a little bit more immersion to the game. So we have my force of Bordolo here ready to take on the rebels that oppose him and his uh, his region in Bretonia. So we've got, well, let's have a quick look at the army comps before we get going. And I'll have paused the battle because you can see here it is quite a short battle. That's something I hope that Warhammer 2 does address a little bit, that we have longer battles in Warhammer 2 because I do feel in Warhammer 1 they, they do go too quickly unfortunately at the moment. But yeah, let's quickly go over the army comps before we get going. So these rebels that oppose Alborek have got some mounted yeomen on the left flank. They've also got some great cannons. I think these are the Bad Company faction. These have uh, teamed up with the rebels of Waterloo. So we've got yeah the mounted yeomen. We've got some cannons on that left hand side. We've got some more yeomen over here. We've got some knights of the realm. Some shot calf. Some more knights of the realm at the back there. Uh, a lot of these units in fact. Some more mounted yeomen. So that's the mixture of cavalry that these guys have got. And then over on the front line we've got some handgunners and some halberdiers, swordsmen, handgunners, etc. You know, the usual motley crew you'd expect from an Empire-esque army. So it's basically, yeah, a Bretonian slash Empire mix army today. And then with my forces, I've got two flanks of Knights of the Realm. So I've got my cavalry, my shot cav for this battle to oppose theirs, hopefully. So those on both flanks. We've got my um, peasant bowmen with pox arrows to hopefully cause some uh, HP damage. Three units of them to march forward. And then we've got some men at arms with the shields, some men at arms with uh, pole arms, men at arms again with shields. So basically I've mixed them up in that line there to add some strength to my uh, infantry line essentially we're going to move forward with. I've got some foot squires, great sword infantry there and then we've got some men at arms with shields at the back as well. So the centre is basically my big hardened great sword infantry in the centre of that line. And uh, yeah and then we've got as well a um, basically a melee specialist, a hero. Uh, did it? What's his name? I wish I could speak. I wish I could speak French. It's Tabat à la bleu or la bleu. <laughs> I absolutely butchered that probably then. And then obviously we've got the man himself, Albrecht. And then over here we have got Vivian Bissette. She is a well, I was gonna say melee specialist. No, she's not. She's a wizard. Hopefully today she can cast a lot of damage on the enemy. Okay then, guys, let us begin the battle and see if we can claim victory for Alberic this. Day. So we're going to slow mode to begin with. So I'm going to talk to you about the plan of attack that I've got for this clash today. So I've got my front line of infantry moving forward slowly but surely, just so they can maintain stamina, and hopefully that will give them the advantage as the battle carries on. So then on the flanks, on the right flank and the left flank, I've got my cavalry and my knights of the realm approaching from either side. The reason I'm doing that is because hopefully what that will do is panic the enemy. Panic them into having to manoeuvre troops from this front line here to either side and that will break them up 
and create gaps possibly, which hopefully I can then smash through my line infantry, exploit, exploit, not exploit, exploit, and um, yeah, begin to get the upper hand on them essentially. So yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do, cause them to have to manoeuvre units from the left and the, the right sides, which will then, as I say, break them up and produce the gaps that I need to, uh, to push into. So that's the idea. Yes, I mean, okay, I'm going to come under intense fire now here from their great cannons because I'm in open field and I'm walking slowly across the battlefield. I'm going to take some losses early on, but I think long term it will hopefully benefit me. And you can see here I've got my bowmen moving forward quickly. They're going to try and take out some of the front line to begin with. And then we've got my melee specialist, my uh, wizard, and the duke himself to hopefully provide some support and in the battle as it carries on but yeah I think really the battle could be won and lost here with these two flanks as they move in because they're going to really sweep across the field here really and then come round and boom into either side there, there's where I think we can win or lose the battle today so let's see how it goes how it plays out but uh, yeah we've only got five minutes <laughs> it's going to be a quick one but uh, yeah we should uh, we should be okay if we maintain our strategy and we keep together and cohesive. Oh, look at that though, you can see straight away, look at that intense cannon fire we're getting under already, or coming under, I should say, as we move forward. We're going to lose the numbers. Hopefully that will... Look at that, 107 now, but hopefully, as I say, keeping our stamina up long term will play into our favour. Look at this. Ooh, flame ball coming across. Just clipping the uh, men at arms there. So it moves our cavalry across. Now they've gone at a quicker pace to get in position now. So they're ready. The enemy have seen them. So they are starting to manoeuvre troops already to try and uh, protect their flanks. Still we have to keep keep strong. Don't let these early kills that they're getting phase us. We've already brought our wizard forward now. She can try and uh, get a... Yes, I think she's going to go for one of these electrical storm shots. Here we go. Boom. Lovely stuff. I forgot what that actual spell is. It's like some sort of electrical storm of some sort. Electrical lightning bolt. It's obviously not the common to Cassandora, but it's something similar to that sort of nature. So you can hear the peasant bowman trying to take out and target the great cannons. Try and take their numbers down. Yeah, you can see one of them has already been destroyed. Trying to remove that threat that they give at the moment to us. That firepower they've already got in place. But now we're going to push forward and this is where we start to essentially work together. The flanks of the cavalry could begin to push forward now. We're going forward with the main line of infantry here now at the same time. This is where we're going to try and unite together and cohesively overwhelm them. Because they're going to have to try and essentially work on three fronts here. It's going to be very, very difficult for them. They're trying to bring the mighty yeoman across to then counter the charge that I put in place with my Knights of the Realm. We've engaged already on this flank. But surely the Knights of the Round will have the upper hand against the Mounted Yeoman. We've got some handgunners over here supporting the enemy's protection of the flank. But it's not enough. We've already we've already taken out that Mounted Yeoman unit there. They've wavered already. They're broken. So you can see here our strength has played in, in some parts. But look at that. Look at that charge from the Knights of the Round that they've got. Oh my god. What a charge for my cat shot calf though. Oh jeez. That was a great charge for my shot calf. Pushing these units of uh, swordsmen back. So we've engaged already now. And I'm trying to find where Alberic is. He's here. We've got to look at him, of course. He is the main man for the battle. He has got the trident. We surely should. That's a bright wizard for the enemy. It's absolute carnage. We can see there. Looking glorious with his trident. And let's go into slow-mo. Because if we don't go into slow-mo, this battle will be over in a second. So <laughs> we've got to try and capture some of it before it ends. So this is a quite a dangerous, bold move by the enemy. The mounted yeoman trying to go straight for our men at arms. I wouldn't suggest to try and do that very often. They're not going to come off uh, 
And then they're not going to come off well there at all. <laughs> I don't know why they've done that. But look at this now. There, Knights of the Realm, Shot Calvary trying to counter my push in the center. Are they going to try and go for a charge? Yeah, they've pulled away. They've pulled away. Thought better of it. But over here, we've got the handgunners still trying to fire across. Look at the plumes of smoke. I've got the smoke mod on, actually. That's making it even... Look at that glorious shot there. Look at that. That is beautiful. So I've got the extra smoke mod on, which is causing this effect today. If you want to get this mod, I'll link it down below alongside the Trident mod. Makes the effects look beautiful. But yeah, I really do hope that Warhammer 2 does make the, the battles a little longer. That's all I want. Just a little longer. Because five minutes is not enough. But we've been very cohesive here, and I think it really has worked to be so organised. We've really utilised the flanks nicely and caused a lot of damage early on. We haven't been able to protect enough. And that, that initial charge from the infantry that then pushed forward at the same time with the cavalry really didn't make the difference, I think. And it's causing them to become a little overwhelmed here. Don't know how they're going to respond, if they can respond here. The numbers are still pretty even, it's still quite fairly balanced. But it's not looking great for the enemy. Let's click play again. As I get my cavalry now to become more mobile again, they've, they've dealt with the Mount Yeoman initially. They've allowed them to now come across the field. They're now going to go for some rear charges, hopefully. And then look at that. Yeah, they've got an ability. Oh, that bright was it went flying, you bastard. Look at that. Wow. Dear Lord. There you go. Bang! Great stuff. Well done, Shot Calf. Doing what they do best. So, we've actually dealt with the left flank pretty easily here. It's all concentrating around this area here where Albrecht is leading the charge from the front. This bloody hang on unit here is causing us a little bit of an issue. So, we've got to try and deal with them in a minute. We've got the Shot Cavalry coming around here to finish off the Yeoman over there. And we've actually dealt with everything on the left flank bar, that, that hero, I think, and the great siege weapon. But apart from that, the great cannon, sorry. Apart from that, they pretty much we dealt with on the left flank. So it's all over this area here now. And the cavalry are able to manoeuvre around the field. And here they go. Here comes the shot cav of the Nazis around. Coming down the hill, trying to finish off these handguns as they try and flee in desperate desperation. Not enough, though. Victory, victory is in our grasp. Things are looking very good now. For Bretonia, or for Bordeaux, I should say. Because the enemy are completely running a mark here. This is the main general for the, the rebels. Guillaume or de Castillon. Again, completely butchered that. But there we go. He has wavered. The whole army has seen this. And they are panicking. And it is a victory, I think, ladies and gentlemen, for Alberic and his Bordeaux army. And yes, yeah, we've done pretty damn well there. Close victory. But it was a very organised attack, and it really did work in the end. Let's have a quick look at the numbers. Sorry it's so quick, guys. I mean, I just try to make it a little bit quicker and slow mo it down for you. But still, it needs to be improved, I think, in, in Warhammer 2. That just shows you, that's a perfect example of why battles can and need to be you know, updated and improved in some way because it's quite quick at the moment. Five minutes isn't isn't enough for a battle of that magnitude. So yeah, we should try and see what Warhammer does and hopefully, fingers crossed, it can improve it. But yeah, looking at the numbers here, we lost 497, they lost 365 and 726. Um, best performing unit for myself was my Peasant Bowman actually, and as you would expect, the Knights of the Realm. 151, 95, 105, 94, some really good numbers there. So, and definitely, as I said to you, you can see there that that group of cavalry was the big influencer on this battle today. Their numbers wasn't great. Halberdiers, 31, 39. Yeah, it wasn't great for them. They had a bit of a bad day at the office, if I'm honest with you. But yeah, organized attack, using those flanks effectively with the shot cav. And moving instantly as well forward with the infantry at the same time as the cavalry approaching, it made a difference. It overwhelmed them. They couldn't coordinate a defence, and ultimately it led to their downfall. And we were victorious. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the video today. And I know it was very quick. Apologies for that. Can't help it. That's unfortunately the way Warhammer is. Warhammer 2, hopefully, as I said to you, will be an improvement in that regard. But we'll have to wait and see. And of course, check out the links in the description to both the Trident mod and the, the more smoke effect mod 
that is available to you as well. So yeah, thank you very much for watching as always guys, and until next time, take care and farewell.